Hello, and welcome to another Quick Tarot with Salon. I am one half of the Pondering Pagans, um, and I'm really excited to be doing another weekly tarot with you using the beautiful Druid Craft Tarot um, by Philip and Stephanie Cargam, uh, illustrated by Will Worthington. Um, this exact deck I have not used before. Um, uh, this is a new replacement, but I have used this deck uh, itself. Um, um, other deck... Uh, another copy of this deck um, uh, previously. So really excited to kind of see what energies we have um, coming in through past uh, Labor Day of this year with all of the things that have gone on uh, in the past couple of years, I would say even before COVID. Um, you know, it's very helpful to me to do readings because it gives me guidance um, from the universal sources that I try to connect with. And it also hopefully provides you some insight and guidance and things that you may be able to work on as well. So we're going to do a simple um, card draw this um, this week for the energy. I've tried a couple of different kinds in the past, but I think this time we're just going to stick to this uh, standard three card with um, clarifiers if we need them. So... Um, Sorry about the extra noise from where the uh, microphone is attached to my desk. Um, you can hear the thumping and the, all the shuffling, but um, I did a small, quick meditation prior to and reconsecrated and cleansed the deck um, and shuffled it pretty good beforehand. So now I am just going back through and doing some reshuffle with my new intent right now, which my intent right now is for a weekly reading. So I'm asking the universe to please show me and what um, to please show me what energies are surrounding us, and what we would like to hear and what we would like to share um, with those things as we come into this week uh, that started really um, today. If you started your work week, um, so that's going to be the the question, and hopefully that's the message we're going to get. And we just got two jumpers, so we're going to pull those. Um, that is the Queen of Swords and the Three of Swords. Well, that's just dandy. The Three of Swords has been in like my last five readings. So, a little, little fun with that. But let's do one more cut and see what we get as a third card. Ten of Cups. So we have the Queen of Swords. The Three of Swords. And the Ten of Cups. So, ooh, knocking stuff off. So what I'm going to do is um, kind of just go through the reading as it is, and we're going to talk about a couple of things um, and really dive into some of the specifics uh, of what the energy is this week, you know, and see. Um, we're going to start with the Queen. So the Queen of Swords is, well, for me, again, if you've been in any of my readings before, um, they generally represent people. Right, and so people um, are the what I call the court cards, right? And so the court cards really tell us about those um, passions and those people that are in a certain, what do you call it, um, um, part of their pathway, I guess you could could say. So things like the knave, right? Knave or um, a page. Uh, this would be the first of the four court cards to me. Not everybody is the same way, but that would be the first four. So. You know, and it really um, speaks to this person or this uh, feminine energy of, of strength, of decision making, of, of the ability to really work in the element of air. And while, you know, the king is the fourth card, it doesn't mean it's the strongest. They all have their, their, their positives and drawbacks. So the queen is really kind of talking about, I don't know, um, how do you how do you phrase it? Um, decision not decision making so much as as really you know basing things off of knowledge. Um, you know, if you base something out of knowledge, which is what air represents uh, in many cases, then your argument can make sense. And so if you bring in and this is one of the energies we're going to need to bring in this week, bring in energy of the Queen of Swords. Bring in knowing before you speak. Um, don't argument or, or don't argue something if you're not sure about it or if you don't know it. If you only think it or heard it, you need to, to learn it and be knowledgeable about it. You know, make a, your information valid. So this isn't about beliefs. This is about things this week um, that you might decide to do that are going to have effect on others or it probably isn't necessarily work related, but maybe your house um, or maybe with school if you're in school. 
uh, or maybe you're learning Wicca or paganism or any of the other um, occults uh, or any really you really need to start looking at that Queen of Swords energy this week and bringing in the idea that you need to research and understand and have knowledge of something before you provide and speak to it on others. So for me this week, the Queen of Swords energy that I want to bring in, um, I am going to try to maybe manifest it in a couple of ways. Um, and I'm thinking this off the cuff right now, just to give an example. Um, I am going to pay attention to things that I am talking to other people about and I'm not going to answer immediately. So if you come to me and ask a question at work this week, um, I'm not going to say yes, that's what you should do or no, that's what you shouldn't do or yes, that's the right thing. I'm going to say, hold on, let me double check the process and policy and I'll get right back to you. Go back, recheck my resource uh, with that Queen of Sword energy um, and then and only then will I put it into play. And I, I'm not going to hold the cards up because I want to put them up on screen for you. So if you hear the flipping, I apologize. I keep going back through it. Um, I do want to kind of mention, though, um, just the description of the card, too. So this Queen of Swords card it immediately begets power. This is obviously a, um, I don't want to say a giant, um, but this is a very strong, powerful woman on this card. Holding the sword, not cutting herself, but knowing that it can, completely confident in what she can and cannot do and what she should and should not do. So um, she knows what's going on in that, in that picture. It's beautiful. Um, the next one is the Three of Swords. So with the Three of Swords, we're talking a little bit different here, right? The Three of Swords to me is eh, not really the card I would love to see right now, you know? Um, the imagery on the Three of Swords is uh, it, it's a tree trunk uh, where the bark has been kind of peeled off. And that's kind of unfortunate because, you know, when the bark peels off of a tree, it can potentially damage the tree and cause it not to, to live the way it needs to and not get the nutrients and protection that it needs. Um, and generally, oh, oh, and you have three swords positioned around a heart that um, are pointing up to some holes burrowed into the actual um, pith or the, the interior wood of the tree. Um, the Three of Swords is often going to be talked about traditionally as a um, card of heartache or ending of a relationship or, um, you know, you're going to get hurt by somebody or something, but it also means that there's a potential that you're going to have this large transformation, this thing coming into your life that's a little bit different. Um, in other words, Three of Sword energy that you would want to bring into yourself is recognizing that if there's something that's difficult or that might cause you heartache or suffering, that using it as a learning experience on the other side will benefit you and the others around you. So that's the energy we're talking about with the Three of Swords. It's that energy of um, heartache, of uh, distress, of um, suffering, but of the butterfly effect of how you can choose to use that energy positively for you, make it through it, be strong like swords are, um, cutting the right things out and organizing the things by cutting them and organizing and separating them appropriately and compartmentalizing those individual things will be helpful. Um, so, so far we've got our queen of swords telling us to be powerful and know before we speak. Um, communication is also a big thing for the swords, by the way. And then our Three of Swords card is telling us just because it hurts, just because it's heartache, just because it's sorrow and suffering, doesn't mean it can't be used to your benefit to, to grow and to gauge forward. So bring that energy in this week. Doesn't sound like it's gonna be anything big. I don't have any major arcana cards in here. We will pull a clarifier though, I think. Um, but with this, this is, this is a small, small, small energy thing. So um, third, last card that we have is the Ten of Cups. So we're going from air, knowledge, intuition into cups of emotion and change and flexibility. And in the Ten of Cups, there's basically an image with the ten um, pieces of pottery that you see there. And uh, a couple of people, looks like probably family, if I had to guess. Um, in the background, you'll see a rainbow. Um, and it, you get kind of the idea that the Ten of Cups is something that you maybe can look forward to, right? So, and I would agree with that. Um, ten of Cups, when you look at the Minor Arcana, it's your 0 to 10, uh, or 1 to 10 actually, not 0. And in that 1 to 10, what you're really trying to do is, you know, follow the path from the beginning and the initiation raw energy to the refined ending and fulfillment of that. Now, it's not always the case. Take the Ten of Swords. We'll leave that out. But this is the Ten of Cups. This is happiness and fulfillment of happiness. So the energy this week accept happiness, allow happiness to occur to you, bring happiness into you, 
And it's very interesting, when you do tarot, your cards will augment each other, so you should always look at them independently and together. So if I'm looking at the Ten of Cups being my third card that I've drawn today for a weekly reading, talking about happiness and fulfillment, then I'm going to go back to, hey, I'm bringing in this Queen of Swords energy. I'm going to be strong and think before I speak. I may have some suffering, some setbacks this week, but I can tell that those things are going to bring about positive. So draw in your sword energy this week. Grow it. Express it. Let it be. Look things up before you respond to keep things and drama to a minimum. And then know that you're going to need to allow happiness to come out of those things. So, you know... In a nutshell, um, this is a very, very positive energy reading when it comes to realizing and recognizing that even if a tarot card says there's going to be suffering and heartache and there's going to be a change, and let me also say too before I continue that, suffering and heartache are keywords um, to help understand kind of the meaning of the card. This doesn't mean that somebody's going to absolutely destroy your heart and do all these things. It just means that there's going to be an element of heartache. Um, again, no major arcana cards making me think that this is some big thing. Uh, but anyway, back to my comment about, about the Three of Swords. That, that heartache and that, that um, suffering or potential dis, discontent that you will feel um, has a benefit. It has, there's a reason we experience that as humans. So I think it's important to understand that we let those things happen. You don't stop them. They, they do occur and they do grow you. But you have to decide to let it grow you. I did say we were going to pull one um, um, uh, card for uh, clarification. So all of the energies that were taken so far, we're learning um, about manifesting those in the energy that's around us, right? So we're going to pull the additional card, which is the Nine of Cups. And so in the Nine of Cups card, which you will probably see here on the screen, I'll, like I said, I'll put it up there. Um, but what you're really looking at here is a gentleman sitting at a table. It looks like he might actually be toasting, right? Um, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But he has a cup. One of what I'm not going to count, but I will look at him just to make sure. Uh, it looks like there are nine total cups on there. And then, you know, from that nine of cups, he's either drinking and or toasting, sitting at what looks like a hallway table. So you got a, this large dining room table. Um, and perhaps, you know, we're, we're dining with others, or perhaps we are um, moving towards or with a group. Um, but whether it's a group or not, your Nine of Cups really speaks to more, same as happiness, similar to happiness, but contentment. So again, we're going to clarify each, sorry about the ring there. We're going to clarify each of these cards by saying, um, adding contentment to it, right? So we're going to take the Queen of Swords, and our Queen of Swords, we're going to bring in that knowledge and, and information, but be content about it. So in other words, be humble about it. Don't let it become something where you have hubris or you're trying to tell somebody they're wrong, even if you know you're right. Let them learn. Your contentment out of Three of Swords energy. How do you get contentment out of suffering? You grow, you learn things, you do things, but you don't shut down and you don't hold the wall up. And then contentment with fulfillment and happiness on the Ten of Cups, and you're golden. Uh, listen to the things that you feel are right and correct, but make sure when you do that, this is through meditation or mindfulness or whatever you do um, to balance anxiety and fear and you know, get yourself together, make sure you're not self-fulfilling a prophecy or make sure that you are not seeing something as a, in a way more negative or more positive than it actually is just because you feel a certain way. So that's really going to be important to that whole thing of, of managing your energy as a weekly reading. This is a pretty simple um, you know, three card draw with one clarifier where you can just take the information, use it however it works best for you, and you know, um, grow out of it, make it something better. Hopefully this resonates with you. Um, if it does, I'm glad. I think uh, it's great when you can and you can take something away from it. But if not, you still have a lesson you can learn here. Um, bring these energies in anyway, because these are the energies of life that we get from the universe at the time we need them. And that's probably a good point, a good way to grow. So I truly appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed the read. Um, today, I think is Monday, right? This is Labor Day Monday. It's around five o'clock PM. So I'm going to post this shortly. Um, if you have any questions, comments about how you see the cards, uh, maybe differently or the same, who knows, uh, any ideas, thoughts, or questions, comments, please make sure to leave some comments down below. If you like to see more, you know, check out our other playlist. We've made quite a few videos in the different areas of our 
pondering paths and pagan paths, uh, some workshops uh, and things like that. So please feel free to check those out. Like if you like this video, subscribe if you want to see more from myself, Salon, and uh, Rook of the Two Pondering Pagans on our next video. Thank you and have a wonderful, wonderful week and blessed be. Thank you.